In the last video, we talked about cinematic lighting and how you can achieve better videos if you light your subjects properly. In this video, I wanna show you guys how I was able to achieve that black infinity backdrop type of shot. I'm gonna show you in 10 easy steps how I accomplished that shot so that you can try it yourself. All you really need is some black backdrops, which are about 20 bucks on Amazon, or a black bed sheet, or even a black blanket will do. I'll leave a link to the black backdrop that I picked up on Amazon for 20 bucks, and I'm gonna be using the Sony ZV-E10, the Sony ZV-1, and the Sony A7S III to show you that you can achieve this look no matter what camera you have, as long as you follow these lighting principles. I'm not gonna ask you to like this video because I figure if you like it, then you just will. If you're interested in subscribing, we're a group of about 90% guys, 10% girls, age ranging from about 18 to 65, and we'd love to have you join us. I forgot to mention that you're gonna need some type of clamps or pins to hold up the backdrop. I actually have these clamps that are made specifically for backdrops, but you could really use anything from clothes pins to safety pins. that we want to do is we want to make sure that we are in a controlled lighting environment. As you can see in this garage here, we have complete uncontrollability from the garage itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to close the garage door. Then we're going to cover this window on this door with a towel. And then we're going to cover this window as well. So we're blocking all of the light sources from inside of this garage. Then we're gonna turn the light off to the garage so we can make sure that all of the external light source is stopped from coming into this garage. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as it looks like this, then we should be good to go. Now I'm gonna turn the light back on so we can see what we're doing. Okay, good. Now, step number two is I'm going to turn off any outside audio sources that might be interfering with our audio. So in this case, we have the refrigerator and the freezer. I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug them. Don't forget to plug those back in. Step number three is we're gonna hang these backdrops up to whatever we can find to hang them to. Don't worry, you don't have to iron them and it doesn't have to be perfect. I've spent a lot of time in the past trying to iron all of the wrinkles out of that, but I'm gonna show you settings in the camera that will take care of that so you don't have to worry about all of the wrinkles that come with your backdrop. I actually have two, one that goes this way and one that goes that way just to give me a little bit more depth, but you really only need one. I've done this shot before with only one. Two just makes it a little bit easier. In my case, I'm gonna hang it on the top of the garage door. And then I'm gonna put one every five feet or so. I'm all about speed, but also getting the job done right. For me, this works out perfectly and it's quick. You don't have to go rent a studio space or construct this huge room with like black walls only to get the shot. It's really simple. So now I'm just gonna connect these two down here so I can close my gap. But again, most of the time you're not gonna need two of them. It's just kinda nice in my case. And then I might stretch this one out a little bit. Step number four is to set up your light. I'm using the We Light Ninja 400 Mark II. You can really use any light, even a lamp that's in your living room, as long as you have some type of softener, like a bed sheet or something that you can soften up the light that's hitting your face. Before I had a nice lighting system where I had like a soft box over my light, I was able to just use a pillowcase or a bed sheet over my light to soften up my subject. Just one thing to remember, don't let your bed sheet hit the light because it might start a fire. I really like this light system because it has different color temperature that I can choose from, which gives me more creative freedom. So in this case, for this little interview style setup that I'm doing, I have the power at 20% and my color temperature is at 4,400. I'm gonna show you what it looks like if I was only to use a lamp and throw the pillowcase over it so you guys can have a good idea of what you're not missing out on. Set your camera up on a tripod at about the level of your eyes or maybe just below and having the camera kind of look up. It just really depends on your preference. And then what I do is I set my lens, this is the ZV-E10, and I'm gonna set my lens to anywhere between 35 and 50 millimeters. Just gonna zoom in until I see the black backdrop only. 
turn your camera to manual exposure. I'm shooting in 4K, 24 frames per second, so I'm gonna set my shutter speed to one over 50, which I already did. I'm also gonna bring my aperture down, but I'm not gonna bring it down as far as it can go, which might be like f2.8 for some lenses, because in that case, my eyes will be in focus, but my ears will be out of focus because I'm so close to the camera. So I would really set it, the aperture, to maybe about f4.0, but you don't wanna go too high on the aperture because we're trying to blur out that background and that's where we take care of that wrinkle issue as long as the camera is focused on you and you have enough bokeh in the background then it really just blurs out all of those wrinkles and you don't have to worry about spending hours trying to get all the wrinkles out of that backdrop so after i'm done with that setting my shutter speed and my aperture it's time to look at the iso now there's two different ways that we can deal with the iso we can either set the iso to auto iso and let the camera do its own work. But I've had problems with that in the past where it exposes for the wrong side of my face and then the side that's getting the light just gets blown out completely. The other way that I use that I think actually works better is to use the zebras inside of the camera. So I have my zebras set up inside of the function menu, which is right here. And as you can see, I turn them on and I have the zebras set to 70. So now I can see with the zebras, that really bright hot spot on my face is just too overexposed. So I just go ahead and turn the auto ISO off and I start slowly bringing it up until I see the zebras right about there. And then I'll bring it down until the zebras disappear. Then I know I'm perfectly exposed. readjust your camera so you get the proper framing, whether that means you have to go up or down with the camera, make sure that the horizon's good, and then also make sure that the only thing in the background is black. I think I'm pretty good here from earlier today. Maybe I just need to fix the horizon a little bit, but that looks good to me right there. Okay, step number nine is to sit in between the camera and the backdrop. Wherever you think you look best as far as framing goes, I like to sit a little bit closer. And the closer you are to the camera, the more blurry your background will be. I'm thinking that this area right about here is perfect for my shot. And finally, step number 10 is to make sure that continuous autofocus is on. And just go ahead and touch your face on the screen just to make sure that you are in focus and that your camera auto focuses on you and bam, now you have a nice, beautiful black infinity backdrop. Now I'm gonna show you some test footage so you can see what it looks like when you do this type of interview shot. So this is what it looks like if I was to do a black infinity backdrop shot with the Sony ZV-E10. I'm not using any picture profiles so that you guys can see what it looks like straight out of camera and how I'm actually achieving this shot with one light. Here I am shooting with the Sony ZV-1. I do have Picture Profile 10 on, which is the S Cinetone type picture profile. I created a video about that. I'll leave that in the description so you guys can take a look at it. But I just want you to get an idea of what it looks like if I was only using the Sony ZV-1 with one light to get this particular interview headshot. So here's what it looks like when I'm using the Sony A7S III. I'm looking off of the camera to give you an idea of what it would look like if you were giving an interview to somebody and they wanted this particular setup. Now I'm gonna show you guys how I'm able to use this little house lamp to get the same exact effect. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a pillowcase right on top of it. As you can see, it's just a normal light bulb that you pick up from the local hardware store. So nothing special. I give myself a little pillowcase so that I have a nice little soft light on me. And I'm going to follow all of the same principles that I did before by setting my zebras to 70, manual exposure, everything. Put this thing just about right there. One thing that I'm gonna do right now is I'm just going to record with this little lamp and also the ZV-E10 to show you that you can accomplish this type of setup no matter what lighting system you have. And if you don't have one of those professional lighting systems, it doesn't really matter because you can achieve it with your household lamp. So now you're seeing what it looks like if I was just to use an old fashioned lamp with an old fashioned light bulb in it and a pillowcase over it 
you're shooting with the Sony ZV-E10 using the same exact principles that I was using when I had a professional light system so that you guys can see that it's very similar results, almost too close to even see a difference. But the point of the story is that you can achieve this look with any lights that you have in your house and like a black blanket as long as you're in a controlled lighting environment and you have a camera that can shoot in manual exposure. So this is what it looks like if I was only using the Sony ZV-1 to get that nice cinematic interview type of shot. Again, all I'm using is a pillowcase over this old lamp and I just use the same principles as I did with the ZV-E10, getting my zebras to disappear and then I know that my face is perfectly exposed. So now you're looking at the picture with the Sony a7S III. We've made the point that you don't have to have an expensive lighting setup in order to get this shot. Here's the real camera. I'm looking off of the camera just so you can see what it looks like if I was doing an interview. But until the next video, I'm Joe with Film Alliance. I hope this video helped you. 